let's formally prove that the DFA that we have constructed from NFA is indeed equivalent to the NFA that we have started with. So this is the theorem. If D is equal to the set of tuples QD, sigma, delta D, Q0 and FD, is the DFA that we have constructed from NFA, N, which is the tuple QN, sigma, delta N, Q0 and FN by subset construction, then the language of the DFA is equal to the language of NFA. We will do this in, we will prove this in two steps. In the first step, we will show that by induction on the length of the string, we will show when we start from Q0 and accept W with the DFA machine, we will end up with some set of states which is a single state in DFA but it has uh, some which corresponds to a subset of Q1 which is equal to the transition from the NFA when we start from Q0 and accept W. Okay, So if we are able to show this, later we can show this the set that we ended is, is a final state. If, it, if W is a string that is accepted by a um, by the language which is uh, designed by the DFA uh, D and NFA N. So let's prove this now. That is the transition from Q0 and accepting W will give me a state which is a subset of QN which is the state in NFA which is a single state in DFA but it is a, a subset in a subset of Q1 and this should be equal to the transition that we make from the NFA machine we start from Q0 and accept W. What is the basis? The length of the string is 0. So the W that we consider is a null string. By the basis definition of delta cap of DFA and NFA, which is the extended definition of the transition function for strings, when we start from some state Q0 and accept null string, we end up with the same state, right? So we end up with Q0 in both the cases. So both are same and this this we have established that it is indeed equal. Now in the induction step let's consider a string w which is of length n plus 1 and we will assume that the statement is true for the string of length n and now we will rewrite w to be some x a where a is the last symbol in the string and x is a string. So x is of length n and we have one more symbol a. So by induction hypothesis I can say when we start from q0 and accept x either from DFA or NFA we end up with a same set okay like that that is what we have established in the basis. And that set we will consider to be P1, P2, etc. up to Pk. Now from the inductive definition of the delta cap of NFA, how do we find the transition from, from this set upon A? Where do we go? We just make a union of all of these things, right? That is when we start from Q0 and accept W, we accept X first and we end up with this one and from this states we are trying to accept A. So union of uh, the, tr the transition from each of the state PA upon A. That is the inductive definition part of 
the delta cap that we have defined for dfa okay so let's take this to be the equation one and from subset construction okay how we have defined the transition from a set of states upon a symbol for each of the symbol we just make the transition from the nfa and find out where it goes and we make a union of all of them so using this we can conclude that when we start from q0 and try to accept w in the dfa i start from q0 and accept x which will end up with set of states p1 to pk and then we make a transition from these sets upon e so we will find out so from 2 we can simply substitute and say that this is equal to this one and from 1 and 2 we can say that the transition that we are making from q0 upon w for both dfa and nfa will end up with the same set of states now we have to show that these set of states will have a final state from fn if the string w is part of the language otherwise both of them will end up with a non accepting state so if we have if when we can observe that the set of states yes assume that the set of states that we have now is a is yes has a final state then both of them have ended in an accepting state then we know that ld the language of dfa is equal to language of nfa otherwise both of them should have ended up with a state which is a non accepting state to show that let's prove one more theorem a language l is accepted by some dfa if and only if l is accepted by some nfa now what is the if part of this theorem if l is accepted by some nfa then we have a dfa accepting the same language so dfa so this part is the subset construction that is we are to construct the dfa equivalent to nfa so that is the subset construction and using the above theorem and we have derived this result that is whatever way we transit on dfa will be similar to the transition that we make with nfa so with these two things we can prove this if part that is if there is a language accepted by some nfa then the l is accepted by some dfa the only if part is if l is accepted by some dfa then l is accepted by nfa so this is dfa to nfa conversion how can we construct a nfa from dfa it is obvious right so every dfa is a nfa also it's not necessary that nfa should always have more than one choices to go for a input symbol from a state or the transitions are not defined even if the transitions are defined for every state and every transition takes a input symbol from one state to exactly one another state it is also a nfa so intuitively every dfa is a nfa but formally we will state that one as well okay so given the dfa d the equivalent nfa we can construct by simply making the transition like this okay the if the dfa is making a transition from state q upon a which is to another state p then in nfa we will start from the state q and upon the input symbol we will go to the singleton set p if we make only this change then we are done okay why it is true we will prove this one if delta d of q not comma w is equal to p then delta n of q not comma w is singleton set with p 
what is the basis let's assume that this w is null string so delta d from q naught upon null string will stay in q naught and with delta n from starting from q naught upon the null string we end up with the singleton set q naught this is the transition of nfa this is how we define the transition of nfa and dfa and thereby we establish that if delta d of some q naught comma w is p then delta n of q naught comma w will be the singleton set with um, p the induction part is let's consider a string w with length n plus 1 and we will assume that the statement if delta d q uh, delta d of q comma q naught comma w is equal to p then delta n of q naught comma w is equal to singleton set with p holds for the string with length n now we will rewrite w as x comma a where x is a string and a is a last symbol in w now by induction hypothesis we can write delta d of q naught comma x equal to some state r if this is the case then this implies that delta n of q naught comma x is the singleton set with r because x is a string of length n and we have assumed that the statement holds for the string of length n so this has to be true now delta d of q naught comma w will be delta d of transition from q naught upon x this will result in something and the transition from that state upon a will be the transition of the entire string w from q naught in a dfa and we know that this is r so it is equal to delta d of r comma a which is which we will assume that some state p if this is the case this implies that delta n of q naught comma w should be singleton set with p why because this a is a symbol okay that is a string of length one and this has to hold thus we have established that if delta d of q naught comma w is equal to p then delta n of q q naught comma w equal to the singleton set p okay now how this re relates to our problem we have already established that the transitions that we are making will be the same and we have also shown that the nature of the states that we are ending with if this is p in the transition that we make is ended with some state p the nature of the transition for the same input string starting with the same state in nfa will be this nature and both us for this w for some w the set that we end up with will be something like this and the intersection of that with the final state of the nfa any one of the set okay any one of the state in the nfa is in the s yes, then the language will be the same that is the string is accepted otherwise it is not accepted which implies that the language of d will be same as that of the language of n in the next video lecture we will consider a variant of the nfa with the epsilon transition and uh, we will prove that all these three are equivalent to each other thank you for watching this video